forgotten about you. That, that is my assignment today, to tell you that he has not forgotten about you. So, so, so if you don't mind, uh, we're going to talk to the tree. Now, I got a few minutes. We, we want to we want talk to the tree. And don't, don't look at me funny because I, I know at some point in your life you probably talked to a tree. I, I don't want to break it down and embarrass you, but you, you, you may have talked to a tree. So, so my, question, my question to the tree particularly is, and I, I know I, I want to suggest that I believe that the tree was selected, but at the same time, uh, I, I would like to ask Mr. Tree, how, how did it feel? What, what were your expectations when, when you were planted with everybody else? And, and, and all of a sudden, you were a seed at one point. There seemed to be no kind of, uh, of, 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 of digression in your growth. Because when others were sprouting up out the ground, so were you. Everybody seemed to have grown uh, at the same time. Simultaneously, you grew out the ground, and when you grew out the ground, all of a sudden, uh, it was time after several months or a year or so, it was time for you to bear fruit. Things begin to happen to, to your neighbors. Your neighbors begin to sprout buds. My question, Mr. Tree, is how did it feel when everybody else had buds? And you didn't. Or, or did you just notice, or did you just know that you were different? And what you had, God was going to bless you with it. Did you not know that God had reserved you for a biblical story? That, that, that thousands of years later, somebody named Glenn Staples would talk about you on a place called Southern Avenue, 700 Washington, D.C. Did, did you know that or were you, were you in doubt that you were not ever going to bear fruit? Were you down? Did you go through changes? And you can help me if you don't want to because I believe in your own mind right now. You're asking Mr. Tree some questions. Because I, I want to know how you can stand there when everybody else is getting blessed and you still got your branches lifted up toward heaven giving God's name the praise acting as if you've got buds on your limbs how, how did it feel to praise him when everybody else was bearing fruit even, even when, when the wind blew pardon me I feel, I feel, I feel preaching e even when the wind blew and, 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 you, and you reeled and you rocked in the wind and it looks as though you were still glorifying God but, but everybody else was bearing fruit but you. Next year came along, same thing. Next year came along, same thing. But it must have been intimidating, Mr. Tree, when, when the Lord of the vineyard came and when he showed up and you heard him talking to your friend, the dresser of the vineyard. Because, oh God help me today. Because, because when, 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 when he kept telling you throughout the years, he said, now, don't, don't worry, Mr. Tree. Next year, will be better. Have you ever been in church and you heard the preacher say, in, in three days, and three days didn't happen for you. And, and in six weeks, and six weeks didn't happen for you. Or, or, or maybe or not, it happened, but you were not in the spiritual place to see what happened. Because if you're going to see spiritual things, you've got to be spiritual yourself. 
You, you cannot see spiritual stuff out of fleshly eyes. I feel appreciated. So, 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 I can imagine the vine dresser telling you and encouraging you that everything was going to be all right. That, that, that's what we are as preachers. We are vine dressers. Sometimes you come to church and, and you hear that God is going to bless somebody. He's going to do it for you. He's going to work it out for you. But, but, but when doubt seeps in and you become overly concerned about what other folks think about you, that causes some kind of dispersion and there is a cloak of darkness that somehow or another drops in front of you so that you can't see what God has for you. This morning I came by to somehow or another tear that cloak of darkness away from your eyes. Oh God, it, 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 it makes me want to be able to tell you that, that, that no matter how bad it feels, God is getting ready to show you what he's got for you. Have you ever been in a position whereby you knew the Lord was going to bless you and you couldn't explain how he was going to bless you? All you had to do, you said, I can show you better than I can tell you. And the only way you can show them is to get your dance on and get your shout on and dance because I don't know how to tell you he's going to bless me, but I can shout for just a minute. I'll shout and tell you. So, in, in the midst of, in the midst of somehow or another dealing with, I got about five minutes and I'm closing. In, in the midst of somehow or another dealing with uh, the other trees bearing, the other trees somehow or another having fruit. All of a sudden, you, you, you see yourself being talked about. And you wonder how to handle being discussed like that. You've you seen the other trees look at you funny as if to say, if he don't hurry up and do something, the Lord of the vineyard is going to cut him down because we've seen him cut folk down before. So that they came when, I'm going to go ahead and preach, I just feel it. And the day came when, when you overheard a conversation. And the conversation that you overheard was about you. And they were trying and discussing cutting you down. Well, I know you have heard people talk about you before. I know you've heard people begin to discuss how they're going to get rid of you. How they're going to kick you to the curb. But, but, but I came by here to, to ask you to give them another chance. Let, let me teach them for one more year, tear up the divorce papers, move, move back into the bedroom and come together one more time. I guarantee you that uh, if you get them to the house of the Lord, I'll tell them what the Bible says about how to talk to you and about how to treat you and about how to communicate with you. Let me dig around the tree for one more year. Let me tell them how to respond to you when you don't feel like it. Do you hear me talking to you? I feel preacher here. I'm, I'm trying to hold myself, but, but, but no matter what you think, I'm getting ready to let it all loose. Glory be to God, because I feel something pushing me in this place. Hallelujah to the Lamb. For a long time, people in the church get married one year, 
and get divorced the next year. Do you hear me talking to you? That's because they don't know how to treat one another. And they don't know how to talk to one another when they're not feeling good or they don't, they're upset or that they're mad about something or that they, they, they did something to one another and, and they don't know how to communicate when they're upset. But I'm going to tell you today that that's when you, you got to use the word of God and treat your queen like a queen, no matter how you feel like it, and treat your king like a king, no matter how you feel about it because your emotions don't stop who they are to you. Do you hear me talking to you? Oh, I came back here to tell you that uh, you're messing up your family and, and you're destroying the lives of your children and, and you're messing with your grandchildren uh, and the mentality and the sociality. Do you hear me talking to you? I feel like preaching here now. Every once in a while you get to the place where you don't talk to one another and the baby see you're not talking to each other. You get to the place where you, you don't want to communicate uh, and you move out the bedroom and you got married so you wouldn't have to commit adultery and as soon as you get married you don't want to be together no longer and that opens up a space for the devil to step in and try to tear down your marriage do you hear me talking to you but I dare you to tell somebody the devil is still a liar God shall get the victory open up your mouth and give God's name a praise out your belly